Don't forget to leave a like, share and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing the Line. We're going to take a look at this story here from news.com.au and I know you're going to be shocked, I know you're going to be uh, confused, but it looks like the politicians uh, in Victoria are trying to give themselves some more money. Now, I know politicians are generally lovely people who don't dip into the pockets of the everyday taxpayer and everyday person, but in this case it seems like they might just be. Uh, Victoria is known for their... Um, leftist psycho babble politicians and their chai latte soy drinking soy boy wannabes are uh, voting them in every time but just in case they don't get voted in just in case they lose their job they are going to now have a safety net of about three hundred thousand dollars a year now i know about uh, I know if I lost my job or if you lost your job there'd be a safety net of Centrelink and i think that pays out about $200 a week and that's only if you get fired so if you quit your job you don't get you don't get the dole for I think six months or something but Victorian MPs or ex-MPs in this case would uh, obviously need $300,000 a year to cover expenses because they're going to have a hard time finding a job now who would vote th for this let's find out we'll read this story from uh, news.com.au Bold welfare plan for ex, uh, Vic, ex MPs, Victorian ex MPs, could cost taxpayers billions of dollars. A bold proposal to endow former Victorian MPs with up to 18 months of, uh, months of salary while seeking new employment would cost taxpayers millions of dollars. A submission made by Deakin University in Victorian remuneration, uh, remuneration trial. Uh, tribunal recommends former MPs be better supported as the transition out of public life. Commissioned by the former MPs in the Parliament uh, to access and transition to life after Parliament, Deakin researchers found politicians struggled to gain employment after leaving office. Because who would want to hire someone that is a known thief, liar, and uh, what, you're going to go and hire someone who you know has just been lying to you for the last however long and been stealing money out of your own pocket? You're going to be hiring that person? No one, I think so. And I don't think they really need a job because they're on about 200 and something, if not more, I think, a year. Uh, obviously, it depends on which part of the government you're in. Uh, MPs are on quite a lot of money. And they have, um, when they retire, they're on about 290, or was it 220, $220,000 or $290,000 a year? Uh, anyway, so I don't know why they need this money, but um, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they. I'm sure the poor buggers are, are going to be really hard pressed after they lose their job. Uh, commissioned by the former MPs of Parliament to access transition to life after Parliament, Deakin researchers found politicians struggled to gain employment after leaving office. The recommendation now before the tribunal calls for six month payment based on a basic MP salary, which is about ninety six thousand dollars, and the further in two further instalments of the same amount if no work is found in the first six months. In total, a former MP could gain up to two hundred and eighty eight thousand dollars under the proposed scheme over eighteen months. If the former MP did find the work in that time, they would be responsible for advertising the Parliament to cut off their payment. Deacon's modelling close that pop up. Deacon's modelling suggests that if there was a high number of the de, uh, departing MPs, i.e., fifty-two, in any given election, the uh, the cost to taxpayers could add up to more than four million in separation payments. That's insane. However, if at least twenty percent of those who walked uh, waited the full six months to find a new job, it would cost up to four point two nine million. I don't know about you, but if I was going to earn uh, $300,000 in 18 months to not find a job. I'm not going to find a job in those 18 months. I don't know anyone that would. I'm sure they'd just be like, oh, well, um, no, I went down to the local uh, job agency and they just didn't have anything for me. I just felt like uh, planting trees, pushing trolleys or, um, I don't know, working in a supermarket was below me because I'm an ex-MP, so I just could not do those jobs. And uh, I, I just could not find a job in 18 months. So I just had to struggle on $300,000. Uh, 
I'd like to know whether they think they're going to even pay, pay tax on that too. Like, with, I doubt they'd pay tax on it. There'd be some sort of loophole there they wouldn't pay tax. Uh, if, if it's like Centrelink, you'd be like, you get to tick whether you're paying tax on it or not. So I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't pay tax on that $300,000. And I guarantee you, not some, one single MP would find month, uh, work in those 18 months. I guarantee you. In comparison, Deeson uh, Deacon also undertook the modelling for six-month payments set against an average worker's earnings, which would cost $2.8 million. But this did not form the basis of their submission. A separate payment system already exists, which is provided on to dependents of an MP who dies in office, the MP who does not seek re-election or otherwise ceases to be an MP, provided there is no corrupt conduct. I'll tell you what, there's going to be uh, a lot of people running for MP now. <laughs> uh, I might do it uh, because I might move to Vic. No, nah, I'm not moving to Victoria. That place is a hellhole. My God, 18 months, $300,000. Their submission into the Deacon researchers used in uh, interviews for the former MPs to strengthen their argument for the payments. I was unemployed. I was the family's main income earner. All of a sudden, things that you take for granted, like paying the mortgage, all becomes a bit shaky. Oh, no, you poor thing. So it was hard for one <laughs> former MP recounted. The submission also detailed how mentally draining losing a seat could be. I was in such a terrible headspace that I probably wasn't applying as, applying as much as I should. Have been, but I don't think it was getting interviews for that reason. One former MP told the researchers, "I have had friends that have been in the position before over the years. When you're depressed and at a low ebb, you kind of don't get the traction potential employees think, uh, because I think there is a vibe around that." One former MP told the researchers, and another submission, Victoria Greens leader Samantha Ratnam called the uh, called on the tribunal to cap any potential salary raise to 1.5 percent. In her submission, the Greens fo- uh, felt said. Already, the MPs had a generous base salary at 1.5% rise, would keep them in line with the public service. Well, they're nowhere, they're way above what we're getting paid anyway. No more uh, than a 1.5% wage increase is appropriate to the consistent work of the Victorian government's current wage policy of the enterprise bargaining framework, her submission said. We believe it is unnecessary and inequitable for members of parliament to receive a wage increases in excess of those being offered by the government to the other public sector workers. The remuneration, uh, remuneration tribunal is accepting submissions up until the end of the month before it makes any decisions regarding MPs' pay. Wow. Um, how many people are going to come and, and MP now? And if they lose, they're going to get paid three hundred thousand dollars or three uh three installments of ninety six thousand dollars whatever it was um that's disgusting we're in a position right now where a lot of people can't pay their bills people are struggling i'm i'm myself working 80 to 90 hours a week my partner is working 80 not to 90 hours a week just so we can keep our head above water i mean i'm not saying that we're struggling really badly because we're both lucky to have a job where we can work that amount of hours. But I know people that are working as many hours as their company will let them and they cannot make ends meet. It's not hard to fall behind on bills. It's not hard to not be able to put petrol in the car. It's not hard to be able to put, not be able to put food on the table. I mean, you go and do a basic grocery shop and you're out of pocket $500. That's for like a few people. That's minimum. Minimum in some places. I can't imagine how much it'd be. It'd have to cost you more in uh, Melbourne, Victoria, or somewhere like that, in big city, to um, for fuel, and not to mention you're going to pay for tolls and all that sort of thing. But it is insane that these politicians think that they deserve three hundred thousand dollars for eighteen months for unemployment. Are you, are you going to raise unemployment for the rest of the people? By that much? No, you're not. Uh, we wouldn't have enough money in the country because I guarantee you, I'd be filing for unemployment the very next day if that came out. Because three hundred thousand dollars in Australia is a massive income. I I was earning, I think, just less than that. No, around that when I was working in the mines, and that's uh, ninety six hours a week or something like that. Three weeks on, one week off. Uh, you got to fly out to the middle of nowhere. Don't have any family, uh, don't have any friends there. You work, sleep, work, sleep, work, sleep until you go home. Uh, and that was a lot of money. That was insane. That was going from um, Centrelink to earning that money was nuts. 
uh, which didn't last long because the government decided that they're going to f- fuck things up so badly that the mines all shut down and a uh, thousand people were out of the job. So that was great. But um, $300,000 to be unemployed just because you're an MP, that I'm not surprised. I mean, we all know that they take everything they can from us and then they just tell us to shut up and do what we're told, especially, especially in Victoria. So Daniel Andrews, his government, I'm sure they'll bash this through and uh, they will get their nice $300,000 severance uh, for 18 months of unemployment. And I guarantee you, not not one single MP will find a job in those 18 months. I mean... I'd find it hard to find a job in those 18 months because the amount of alcohol and blow I'd be doing on 300k to sit on my ass. Um, I don't know about you. What do you guys think anyway? Let me know down in the comments below. Leave a, uh, leave a comment, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in another episode of Crossing the Line. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.